la frottine, Bordeaux. No, Jean Lavarque. A rich world made empty and poor. The English put her on trial as a heretic. Jean's mind was as sharp as her sword, and she avoided all the cunning verbal traps of her prosecutors. In the end, Jean would not renounce her mission. The English found her guilty and burned her at the stake. But her death is not in vain. La Pucelle is the rallying cry as peasant and noblemen alike take arms. My army is an army of the people, and even without the king we are poised to strike at the English stronghold of Castillon. A victory at Castillon will crush the English pretensions in France forever. Should I die in this battle, I die for the maid of Orléans. I die as a patriot of France. Sweet John, I shall avenge thee. Lord Jocelyn, the army awaits your command. Longbow's fair against fresh cannon. Ah, the eel sword is not bloody enough. Set. Cafe. Cafe. À la bataille. Oh 
Oh yes. Que faire À la bataille.
Spoil.
A century of English toil, blood and victories was reversed in a little over a year by a teenage girl. The Hundred Years' War has ended. Even more importantly, Jean's acts reignited a sense of French nationalism. Peasants and nobles alike no longer belong to lords and kings, but to France herself. We will not let Jean be forgotten. Already statues and stained glass portraits have been commissioned in hundreds of towns and cities throughout France. Her verdict of guilt was rightfully reversed, and eventually Jeanne of Arc was beatified as a saint. Sometimes the outcome of history is determined by strength of arms, other times by happenstance. But in 15th century France, history was determined by the will of a young girl, the only person in history to command the armies of an entire nation.